Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back to another video. And in this tutorial, let's go ahead and learn about sliders. And sliders are actually one of the more common items that you're gonna add to your interfaces. So I wanted to take an entire tutorial and talk about them because they behave a little bit differently than some other items. So first of all, what I did is I created a brand new blank project, nothing special. Now for this, the first thing I'm gonna do is just uncheck use size classes disable so we got that standard iPhone template now of course a slider you guys could probably already guess what this is it is that thingy that the user can slide all right pretty cool so you would use this there are a lot of like user settings that are variable or also if you're like making a game and your character can have like a different amount of I don't know like life or health or anything like that then you're gonna use this now you're probably wondering all right well what's the value of this what numbers does it return by default well whenever we want to say the minimum or maximum or what number it's set up at default what we can do is we can hop over to the attributes and give it all those values right here now right now it's at zero for the lowest and one for the biggest but you're usually going to have something like one to 100. say that you're making a game and your user can never have like greater than 100 health or something. Now the current is whenever this slider first appears on the screen, what is the default value? What is the default position? And for this, I'll just set it at 50. So look what happens when I deselect that, the slider moves to the middle position right there. So again, this is all the background information, the value that iOS is gonna know, but the user has no way of knowing, all right, is this 50, is this 500, what? So for that, a nice little indicator, I'm just gonna add a label on the screen. And this label, in this example, will set the 50 at first. And just so I have no space, let me maximize this and center align it by clicking this button and drag it in the middle of the screen. So again, all this demo is gonna do is the user is gonna slide this and it's gonna change the value and display it to them. But again, in real life, you would wanna do something like changing like the health of your character or something like that. And also just because this is annoying me, I wanna change the background color. So make sure you have both your items deselected and just click somewhere in this white area. And I'll change it to like, hmm, that's pretty good color. Whatever color that is, turquoise or something. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to get rid of that file navigator. I don't really need it right now and go to my split screen so I can see exactly what's going on behind the scenes. So let me just go ahead and get rid of some of these comments. So it's a little bit more clear. All right. So the first thing we're going to need is of course an action and the action of course, to add it, you hold down control, drag, create your action. And I'm just going to, first of all, change this to action. And what do I want to call this? I'll just name it something like slider changed. Now for the type of what can call this, well, this slider right here and hit connect. Now here's the thing. Before, whenever we made a button or something, these methods were just called pretty much one time whenever the user clicked the button. However, for a slider, what's gonna happen is this method is gonna be called every time the value changes. So if they slide it from 50 to 100, it's gonna be called, you know, like not just once, but constantly. So it's constantly going to be called whenever they are changing the value of this. So that's why it's a little bit different than a button or anything like that. And you guys are gonna see in the example exactly what I'm talking about. Now, another thing we need to do is if we wanna change the text on this label, we need to outlet to it. So control, stick it right up there. And yes, it is an outlet and I'll just name it something really creative like label. All right, looking pretty good. Now, in our method or action, what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys a problem that we have by default. So if we take a variable and what I wanna do is I wanna get the value of the slider. So what I can do is I can actually call sender, which is the slider itself. That's the object that's 
causing this method or action to occur. And on this, I can just get the value of it. Now, I don't know if you guys saw, but what that does is it returns a float. So even though whenever we look at this slider, the minimum is one, the maximum is 100, and the current is 50. So in your head, you're probably thinking, all right, they can slide it to something like 64, 72, 10. But what's actually happening is it's getting the float value. So a bunch of decimal places. So I'll show you guys the problem that we have in just a second. But anyways, once we have that value, we can change the text on this label equal to whatever that value is. So I just set it equal to something like slider, not cylinder, slider value. All right, now this, all right, it looks pretty good. I mean, we don't have any errors, but let's check this out. All right, and I forgot to change to my iPhone stimulator. All right, so build succeeded. Looking good now. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. I put it to one to 100. And now I mean, it's working fine one to 100. But I'm getting all these float values. And that's not really what I want because I really don't care, you know, how precise that is for just my game. So if you want this effect, then it's fine, you can leave it. But most people just want the whole number. So what you can do in that case is this. Let me just cut this. Now for the slider value, what you can do is you can call a method called L round F and make sure you choose the one called float. Because again, what this is doing is it's gonna give you a float by default. So just hit enter and for the value, you can just write sender value. So this is the value from the slider and what we're doing right here is we're just rounding it off to essentially the nearest whole number. So now if I run this, check out what happens. There you go, it gives us the effect that we were looking for. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is a slider. And in the next example, I'm gonna be showing you guys one of the more, well, this was also a pretty common item, but another item that's used a lot, and that's segmented control. So I'll see you guys then.